good. Shalom. Uh, we thank God for another day. Thank you for another time that we've come together. We praise Him. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. Well, oh, y'all sound too happy this morning. Happy New Year. <laughs> Amen. This is a brand new year. This is a, a new beginning. Uh, God has got some awesome things in store for us. This year, I do believe, I'm watching God fulfill a lot of his promises to us. And I do believe that uh, as we continue to honor him and worship him, we are going to continue to grow uh, in God and grow as a church family. Um, every time I turn around, it seems like I see a new face or a, a new child or, you know, God is good. He's continually showing us that uh, what we're doing for him, it matters. Amen. You know, I do believe a lot of times that we, we kind of question or wonder if the things that we do really matter to God. And you need to know that they do. I don't care how, 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 how mountainous it is or how small it is. It may be insignificant to people on the earth, but to God, it matters. Amen. Every time you praise him, every time you say hallelujah, every time you say thank you, Jesus, Every time you acknowledge him, it matters to God. And he loves you so much that every day he gives you brand new mercies. Yes. Amen. Isn't that something? Amen. Every single Amen. day right. you get brand new mercies. And I've said it before, there's been times when I've used up all today's mercies. And I, I, I want to kind of borrow something from tomorrow. You know, Lord, if you can give me something for tomorrow, you know, give it to me today. Because I know I've used them all up. But God is so faithful, and God is so good, and so I thank him. I thank him for what he's doing. I thank him for each and every one of you. I thank you uh, for coming out and to being uh, faithful with us and praying for us and blessing us all through last year. It was a, 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 a great growing year for us, and uh, God is, is he's on the throne. Yes. And he's got so many things in store for us, and I want you to really uh, uh, begin to look at God in a different light. I want you to begin to see God in so many different things that you've never saw him in before. That's the one thing I know about God. God is not hidden. Amen. He's not hidden. He is so outward. He is so present. The problem is, is that we skew our vision. Mm -hmm. We uh, tune down our hearing. We don't focus like we should so that we can see him. I'm not talking about seeing God the Spirit. I'm talking about seeing his presence in the things that he's already placed here upon the earth for you to enjoy, for you to become familiar with, for you to utilize that will help build you as a better child of God. Amen. God wants you so much to become strong and courageous, to be blessed so that you can be a blessing to others, and so that you'll be able to know without a shadow of a doubt that he's alive, that he's well, that he lives, he breathes, and he's got your best interest at heart. Amen? Amen. Amen. So we're going to start out this year talking about transforming the inner man. Now, this being uh, the first day of 2017, I guarantee you there have been those who have uh, made what they call New Year's resolutions. Anytime you make a resolution about something, you are, in essence, promising that you are going to uh, set something in motion, that you are going to change about yourself or about your situation, about your life. You've had uh, a full year previous uh, to this date to have accomplished last year's resolutions, which most people make on January 1 and break them by January 31. <laughs> Amen? Amen. Amen. Amen? Amen. I learned a long time ago I don't make resolutions. Yes. Amen. <laughs> But what I do do is, 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 is I constantly ask God to help me change. Constantly help me become a better person. Help me become a better 
Christian. Help me become a better child of God because I represent him on the earth. When you see me, you ought to be able to see God in me. When you hear me, you ought to be able to hear God's voice through me. When I'm in your presence, you ought to be able to feel the spirit of God that is alive and well and can touch you at any point at any time. Amen. I'm not talking about Malcolm. I'm talking about God. So in order to do that, we've got to learn how to transform that inner man that's in us. We've been born into a sinful world. We had to become born again in order to have uh, 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 stripped ourselves from that sinful condition that we were born into. To become now born again afresh anew in God so that we can have a right to his kingdom. And be able to do the things being obedient to his word so that he can be so pleased with us to give us the desires of our hearts. That's the word of God. So we have to constantly look at the things that we do. So often, we as Christian people, we become caught in a vacuum. We do. We don't grow or we don't expand beyond our comfort zone. We've set ourselves into such a pattern sometimes that becomes so mundane to be a Christian. A lot of times we don't even utilize that word. We don't say I'm a Christian anymore. You're just supposed to just know that I'm different from you. But you have to be able to know that if you've lost that fire and if you've lost that passion that accompanies serving God, you know how it was when you first got saved, when you first entered the world, introduced to God, you was like, nothing can stop me now. You've got to get back to that. A lot of times we begin to praise God out of habit. It's Sunday. I'm supposed to go to church. So I go to church. For us, on Tuesday, it's Bible study. So I go to Bible study. Now, the rest of the time, the rest of the week, we live according to our own way of thinking. Our praises have now become surface. Therefore, our praises are ineffectual. We begin to wonder why we're so vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. We begin to lose our faith. We lose that in the power of the Holy Spirit that has been placed in us. Romans, the 12th chapter, verses 1 and 2 in the New Revised Standard Version. He says, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice. This is a word you're going to hear me talk a whole lot about in 2017. And that's that word, sacrifice. Because a lot of times we don't want to sacrifice anything. That means giving up something that you hold so dear so that you can make room more for God. He says, a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Do not be conformed to this world. Do you know what it means to be conformed? Like molded. molded. Set as a form of what has already been set. That's a big problem with a lot of our churches today. They're becoming conformed to the world. They're allowing a lot of the world's influence to come into the church because we just want to be friendly. <laughs> We don't want to offend anybody. We want to bring them in and make them feel warm and comfortable and happy. But you're being conformed to the world instead of the world being conformed to you. He says, but be transformed by the renewing 
of your mind. That's the first place you need to be removed. It's in your mind. The way, way you think. The way you see. The way you feel. So that you may discern what is the will of God. What is good and acceptable and perfect. So you need to be able to know what is the will of God. A lot of people, I guarantee you, there are a lot of people that do not know God's will for their life. And I'm here to tell you, if you really want to know God's will, then you need to know God's word. Amen. God's will is in his word. And if you're not reading his word, if you're not letting his word become a part of your life, you'll never know God's will for you. I've said it and I continue to say it. There is, and I believe there is, a general will for the body of Christ. Everybody's supposed to do this. Everybody. But I also believe that there is a specific will that is just for you. Got your name on it and no one else's. It's attached to your DNA. It's what you specifically are supposed to do. And I guarantee you God's going to hold you accountable if you don't do it. Because he's not a wasteful God. He's not going to give you something that he does not expect you to use. He's not going to give you something that he knows you cannot use. Remember, he knew you before you was even formed in your mama's womb. So he knows all about you. So to renew means to make new or as if new again. To take up again. To resume. To restore. To replenish. To repeat so as to reaffirm. To revive. To start over. That's what it means to become renewed or to renew. Um, I think it was one time my, my mother-in-law had given Michelle and I a big box of uh, silver coffee tea set with cups and plates and, you know, urns and all kinds of stuff. It was this big old box. And we let it set for a long time. Then finally one day we decided, let's take a look at it. So we pulled it out of the box and it was all tarnished. So what are we going to do with this, baby? So I went and got some of that, what was it, Tarn Off? Brasso. Brasso. I can't remember what the name of it was. It was in so many different products out there. But we spent hours rubbing, cleaning, rinsing, trying to re- knew this back to a point to where it would glisten the way it did when she first gave it to us. And it took a lot of work, but we finally got it back to its original condition, and it looked beautiful. It was wonderful. But that's how it is even with you, child of God. If you have strayed off of God's pathway and you need to be renewed, it, it's going to take you doing something. Number one, you got to change the way you think. Mm -hmm. And sometimes that is one of the hardest things to do because we become so sedimented. We become so comfortable. We become so uh, at ease with the life that we now live. We think, well, God will take care of it. I don't need to do that anymore. It's not how it works. You need to be renewed, restored, brought back to original condition. And then we talk about being revived. To bring back to life or consciousness. Resuscitate. To impart new health, vigor, spirit to. To restore the validity or effectiveness of. And to renew in the mind and to recall. I do believe that there's a lot of God's people that need to be revived. Now, I'm not talking about renewed, I mean revived. Right. They've died in God. They've totally just turned off, 
don't want to do, don't want to work. This thing about God, it don't work no more. He's let me down. He don't love me no more. And you need to be revived. You need to be woke back up. You need a, a rekindling of a fire that once burned so bright in you that nobody could tell you nothing about God. You knew all about God. You was telling everybody about God. God was number one, numero uno. It was a nobody but God. And now you can't even say his name. You need to be revived. You've died. Put new breath back into your life. Sets you back up on a whole new way of seeing things. First, 2 Corinthians 5.17 in the Amplified Bible says, therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a new creation, a new creation all together. The old or the previous moral and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. So if you're in Christ, the your old way of thinking, your old way of acting, your old way of walking, your old way of talking, that needs to pass away. That needs to be buried, gone, put away, burned up. However which way you want to destroy it, it needs to be destroyed. Because you now need to have a whole new way of living. Everything now has to become brand new. We are made new by the engrafting of the Holy Spirit. Does anybody know what it means to be engrafted? I was watching um, one of my favorite uh, sci-fi shows. Uh, it was a Star Trek episode. And uh, the individual was talking about how he had an orchid that was uh, from Earth. And he had taken a plant from another planet and had slit a part of the plant orchid from Earth and had placed this part of the plant from another planet into that fold. And it caused the part that had been put in to now become a part and it really created a whole new plant. So what it means to be engrafted means that the Holy Spirit has now become a part of you. You are no longer that person you used to be. You are now a brand new person. You have a whole new purpose. You have a whole new reason of existence. You have a whole new mindset of how you need to live, what you need to do, how you need to do it. That's how we begin the change. Our lives now become new. The former corrupted life that we once had has died and it has been buried. We are not to go back and dig up the old man or old habits. Um, Anybody get anything, any, any new clothes for Christmas? Oh, come on, y'all ain't nobody getting nothing new for Christmas. Now, this is a participation place. You know, here I, you know, this, I might be, this, this is a different church. I do allow my people to talk. All right? So if you got something new, what'd you do with the old one? Did you get rid of it? Did you send it over to uh, uh, the thrift store or the Salvation Army? If it was a replacement? You got something brand new. You opened up the package. You got that new smell. Hits you in the face. Ooh, it was nice and shiny. If it was white, it was tidy whitey. And real good. You know, the colors was bright and brilliant. And then you looked in your drawer and you saw that one thing that looked like, oh, man. What am I going to do with that thing? So you put on your brand new one and you stroll out. But it's just not fitting right yet. 
So you take it off and you go back and you pull out that old dungy, grungy, filthy, no good smelly, the dog that rolled around in it a little bit, the kid that threw up on it a little bit, you done slept in it a couple of nights, and you want to put that bad boy back on because it's comfortable, it's familiar to you. Maybe you just got something brand new, you ain't broken in yet. But now you want to go back and pull out that old grungy thing and put it back on. That's the same as you going back and digging up the old man. God has changed you now. You've now got a whole new set of threads. It's called the Holy Spirit. You got a whole new shiny, brand new, tidy whitey, all glistened up, cleared up, beautiful colors that's radiating out of you so that the world sees you. They see somebody they ain't never seen before. They could have been with you all their life and now they see somebody brand new. But you decide to go back and pull out the old and put it back on again. And you know what you've really done when you've done that? You've caused other people's perception of you to become skewed. Because remember, you start talking about how good God is. But you go back and start acting the same old way. So how good is your God that you can't change? That's how God wants you to understand that he needs you to do away with the old man. Once you buried him, once he's put away, don't go back and dig him back up again. Put on that new. Watch that new now become strong for you, better for you. Allowing you to do the things that God needs for you to do. But too often, when we go through our growing pains or our trials of faith, we stop depending on the Lord. I've done it before myself. We start to go back and lean on our own understanding of things. Because, well, you know, I used to do it like this, or I used to. And when you start doing that, you'll find yourself in a worse condition than you started out with. Mm -hmm. Because God's got a whole new direction for you, but you want to go the old way. Amen. There's been many a times that Michelle and I have gone to places and we decided, well, let's 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 go exploring a little bit. Let's 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 go this way. Or let's try it this way. Or let's do this. Because it's you know, you wanna you want to have something fresh and new in your life. The old just gets boring. It gets mundane. It drags you down. And it doesn't give you any opportunity to see God's freshness in your life. God's got many things prepared for you. And he wants you to enjoy them. But you have to have a mindset knowing that the new that God has for you is way better than the old that you used to have yourself. And any time you've done that, you start to lean on your own understanding, you've just dug up that old man. you got to put that old man back. Even though he's familiar to us, even though we feel safe a lot of times with that old man, Satan knows just exactly how to use that to infect you with the germs of sin. He utilizes all of that to begin to tear you down, to attack your faith, to attack your trust in God, to cause you now to become useless. What was buried had really begun to rot, but you decided to put it back on. Hmm. I believe that I'm, I'm trying to remember who that my wife she's more of a history buff than I am but back in antiquity there was a group of people that when they wanted to uh, punish uh, certain uh, acts uh, of you being illegal or going against uh, the uh, laws of the land they would take a uh, dead body. The Romans. What's the Romans? They would take a dead body 
and they would strap it to your back. And you would have to walk around with a dead person on you. Hmm. Now what would begin to happen when that body began to rock? You rot too. You would rot too. You couldn't take it off. Hmm. You're walking around. You're smelling because they're smelling. The bugs that are beginning and the, and the worms that are beginning to eat that flesh starts eating you. Yeah. Right. And sooner or later, you die. Now I want you to, I really want you to have that mental picture. Because that's the same thing that happens when you dig up that old, rotten, disease-ridden, worm-eaten old man that you should have buried when you got the Holy Spirit and you put him back on. You begin to rot yourself. You become useless to God. Yeah. Because you have no power. You've got no authority. You've got no praise. Mm. Because you're dying just like that rot that is attached to you. The longer that we remain in our comfort zones, the further we actually separate ourselves from yeah. God. Our growth in God has become stifled. Without the renewing of the inner man, we will surely die. A spiritual death. You don't want that. You want to be vibrant in God. You want to be able to tell the world all the things that God has done for you. You want to be able to make a difference in the lives of your family, in the lives of your friends, in the lives of your co-workers, everybody you meet. People ought to be able to see you and see a vibrant, alive, spirit-filled person who makes a difference in the lives of everyone that they come into contact with. The inner man must be renewed. Amen. Amen. And it happens to all of us. It happens to all of us. Don't think that pastors do not go through situations where they become tired, become worn out, become discouraged, become disheartened, and need a renewing, need a refreshing. I went through that. I did. I went through a time when I was going to give this up. I was not going to pastor no more. I started looking for a church to go to so that I could just go and sit in the back, hear my little word, pat my little hand, and go home. <laughs> God told me, did I tell you to quit? And I told him, no. You know how little kids do, you can stick on the bottom lip, no. You didn't tell me to quit. <laughs> and he began to work on me. He began to renew in me a fire and a desire to do his work and to do his will. And that's why we're here today. I got a fire, I have a desire to serve an awesome God who has awesomely blessed me beyond my wildest imagination. Thank you. And I'm giving it to you. I'm giving it to you. I want you to know this is the God we serve. He's got so much in store for you. You are not to ever walk around with your head up and down because you serve a God who owns a cattle on a thousand hills. That's in the word of God. People say, what's that mean? That means he owns everything. Mm -hmm. I don't care how much the enemy is trying to do things to dissuade you, keep you down, bother you, strip you. God owns it all. Yes. And he wants to give it to you. All you need to do is make up your mind to want to serve him and honor him and be obedient to him. And I guarantee you, he'll open up the doorways for you. See, King David, even after he had sinned, great sin, asked God this question. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. See, David had become a murderer and an adulterer. That's pretty serious. Mm -hmm. Even in 
days time. But he was a man after God's own heart because he knew how to go to God and ask what a wonderful forgiveness. Forgive me, Father. Create in me a clean heart. Destroy any semblance of evil that's in me. Evil's been in me. I did things. I did some things. I, I, I caused a man to die. I took his woman. I did all kinds of things. But you, God, have the ability to wipe out all of that sin in me and create a brand new, clean heart. And then renew that steadfast spirit. What I had for you when I was playing for King Saul, when Saul couldn't sleep, and you gave me the music to play for him that soothed his soul. When I went up against Goliath and I was able to kill a giant and cut off his head. When I was out there with my sheep and a lion came and I killed him and a bear came and I killed him. I had a steadfast spirit. I had joy, but I lost it. I need you to renew that same spirit in me. Each and every one of us ought to be able to say that same thing. Start all over again in yes. me, Lord. Clean me up again, Lord. Yes. Renew in me that spirit that allows me to be strong, courageous, and remember those things you've done for me in the past. Because if you did it for me before, you do it again. That's the Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. The Amplified Bible in Romans 12 through 2. Do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external, superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind by its new ideas and its new attitude, so that you may prove for yourselves what the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. See, we, we read this earlier. But I loved how it said this in the Amplified. Because it really broke it down. It said, don't be conformed to this world or this age, especially this time. Our children are being bombarded. Yes. Yes. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. By the enemy's desire to get them at a young age and turn them against God. Oh, he's got it so so wrapped up in a nice pretty bow. He's got the music that sounds so tickling to the ear. Smells good. Seems good. But when you open it up, it's nothing but darkness and evil and death. It's not just happening to our young people. It's happening to everyone. I've seen old folk. That would walk with God for a long time decide I ain't walking with God no more. I had a um, there was a there was a um, a minister that I grew up with. And uh, I loved him. I loved to hear him preach the word of God. I loved his fire, his desire. The word that he preached was just my goodness, man, you could not sit and hear him preach and not be filled with a desire to go out and conquer the world. And I saw him one day at a cabaret with two girls on each arm and a cigarette and a bottle and a glass of, uh, of liquor. He had no longer been preaching no more. He had left God and he went out into the world. I'm not talking about a young man. I'm talking about a person who was my father's age at the time. So don't think it's just happening to our little children. It's happening to anybody who has lost the fire, has gone and put back on the old man, strapped that rotting flesh to your back, and you will die. It hurt me. That hurt me. That, that hurt me. That really did. I was very um, upset. The thing is, is I looked at him and he looked at me and he knew who I was. And I could see a little bit of shame on his face because he was one who knew that I was one who really held him up in great esteem up to God. And I never saw him again. The next thing I heard, he died. 
and it was bad. But this is what happens when you decide you don't want to walk with God no more. You don't want to be obedient to his word anymore. You let yourself open to the attacks of the enemy. God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. He never said, you won't leave me and you won't forsake me. When you come out from up under his covering and come out from up under his protection, you let yourself open to any attack of the enemy and he's just waiting because the Bible says he goes around as a roaring lion yeah. seeking whom he may devour, eat up, tear up, and destroy. But then Isaiah said, the prophet in Isaiah 40, 31, but those who wait on the Lord shall renew their strength. Mm. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. Those who wait on the Lord. He said you're going to renew your strength. I'm going to give a, 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 some, some, some teaching on the eagle mm. coming up here soon. Because you need to know about, about the eagle. God speaks a lot about the eagle. He's, the eagle is so precious to him because it is a bird that is so majestic but it has so much power and so much strength and it teaches its little ones from the very beginning yeah, it does. you better fight you better fight you better fight but we're going to do a lot of warfare this year we did a lot last year God's got me on it again. Don't think I ain't coming back because we're going to do it because we got to fight. We got to fight in 2017 like we didn't have to fight in 2016. Right. I'm going to tell you that now. Right. You all got some, we all, we all got some fights coming up. We got some battles that we can already see that's coming our way. Oh, yeah. That if we don't fight, we're going to lose. And God never intends you to lose. We have to realize that if we are praising, worshiping, and working for God with only an outward man, we're truly accomplishing nothing. It is only surface. And therefore, we have no footing, but we have no grounding. Paul tells us again in 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be steadfast and movable, Always abounding in the work of the Lord, knowing that your labor is not in vain. I told you earlier, sometimes Lord. we feel like, you know, what we're doing is it really mean anything to God? You know, I'm 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 I'm, I'm striving, I'm struggling, I'm really trying to to, to 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 do what you said to do. I'm trying to be obedient. And I know I fall, but Lord I get back up. It doesn't seem like my situation is changing. You know, I keep wanting to, 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 to be better and do better. Does it really mean anything? He's telling you, be steadfast, be immovable, and always be abounding in that work. Don't give up. Keep going. Knowing that your labor, what you do, is not in vain in the Lord. He sees everything you do. And trust me, he is working it all out. For your good. And in Ephesians 3 and 17. That Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That you being rooted and grounded in love. That you need to be rooted and grounded in love. He dwells in your hearts through faith. Christ has not left you. He is with you every single day. Remember he had said, he had told the disciples, he said, I'm going away, but I'm going to send you a comforter. I'm going to send you a counselor. I'm going to send you. I'm going to be with you. He's with you every single day. And it's because of his love that you need to be rooted and you need to be grounded in God. See, Jesus spoke about building up the inner man on a solid foundation of the word of God, having a sure footing and a stable condition. We had a parable. He, uh, Jesus gave a parable in, in Matthew about an example of being rooted and grounded in God. It says, if your life portrays a waysidedness, neither hot nor cold, but lukewarm. I know you've heard that in Revelation. He says, if you're lukewarm, I'm going to speak you out of my mouth. 
If you have, if you're in stony places or have hard heartedness, I've met too many Christians that are hard hearted. They got no love. They are mean. They look like they've been sucking on lemons all day long. <laughs> they don't smile. They're always mean. You know, every every word they tell you is all about, you know, damnation and hell. And there is hell and damnation. It's happening. But you also, also need to know that God's goodness, for the word says that it is the goodness of the Lord that leads men to repentance. Amen. You need to know about God's goodness as well. But people a lot of people don't want to do that. They don't they don't laugh. Ain't no fun. I have people tell me, you know, you can say you can't have no fun no more. I'm like, y'all don't know me very well. Because me and Michelle been having we ball. Have ball. <laughs> we go places, we do things, we have fun. I guarantee you, I, I, I literally am having more fun being saved than I had when I was in the world. Amen. Amen. I'm serious. And no hangover. And no hangover. <laughs> no hangover. Ain't got to worry about somebody creeping up on my back. God is good. We need the joy of the Lord in our lives. Yes. Or if you're in thorny or being tangled up, we allow too much of the world's influence to come into our lives. We allow too many cares of the world to overshadow our faith and our trust in God. We're so concerned about what's going to happen next. Uh, uh, I, I, I can guarantee you one of the biggest concerns that we're going to have is because we have a brand new president. You don't have no clue what he's going to do. You don't know how he's going to act. You know, and we don't. Mm -mm. But guess what? We don't put our trust in him Thank you. anyway. Amen. Amen. You Amen. better put your trust in God. Amen. Amen. That way you know what's going to happen when you put your trust in God. He's got your back. Amen. He's got your front. He's got your sides. He's got your top. He's got your bottom. He's all around you. Amen. He's got it all taken care of. Nothing can grow. Seeds of faith are going to be lost to the elements of the world if you allow all these things to come into your life. But Matthew 7, 24 to 27 in the Living Bible. All who listen to my instructions and follow them are wise, like a man who builds his house on solid rock. Though the rain comes in torrents, and the floods rise and the storm winds beat against the house, it won't collapse, for it is built on rock. See, when you build on a firm foundation, doesn't matter what happens. We were, Michelle and I go down to um, Tennessee, we go down to Pigeon Forge and Gatlinburg every year. We just, a couple times we've gone twice a year. That's, that's, our, that's one of the places we just love to go. And uh, this past November, it was a horrible fire that consumed quite a bit of uh, acreage, uh, forestry, and homes. And we were watching a video on YouTube yesterday uh, where people were had, had gone back and have taken uh, videos and pictures of, of uh, the devastation. And you could see so many houses, so many cabins gone. I mean, just ash. Brick, I mean the brick, the stone burnt yeah. ash. Mm, cars. But what was amazing that you could see one house burnt gone. The house next to it not touched. House on the other side burnt to a crisp. House in the middle not touched. One side of the road, everything on this side of the road gone. 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 Cars burnt to a crisp. The very other side of the road, everything intact. <coughs> That's God. Amen. But see, it's just like this. If you build your faith, if you build your trust, if you build your life on a firm foundation, stuff can be happening all around you and it will never touch you. Amen. It will never come nigh your dwelling. You will be steadfast, strong, unmovable and you'll be blessed when you build it the rains come the torrents come the floods rise the storm winds beat against the house but it will not collapse because you've built your house on God but those who hear my instructions and ignore them are foolish 
like a man who builds his house on sand. For when the rains and the floods come and the storm winds beat against his house, it will fall with a mighty crash. I also watched a uh, documentary regarding a lot of different storms and things that happen. We were talking about you know, a lot of the different hurricanes that have hit Florida, ones that have hit um, uh, Mississippi and New Orleans. And it was amazing to watch and see that some of those houses that were built poorly, gone. Those ones that were built according to the right specifications, those that were built on a good foundation. This house gone, that house gone, this house still standing. So you gotta listen to God's instructions. You have to know the schematics that he has already written for your life. You need to know exactly how he wants you to live, exactly where he wants you to go, exactly what he wants you to say, exactly what he wants you to introduce into your life so that you are able to stand in the midst of every storm, every wind, every problem, every situation, and you'll never go down. You will never go down. You will never go down. Amen. That's God. That's what he's expecting of us. When we surrender our will to the will of God, we transform the inner man into a vessel that God can and will use for his glory. Amen. I guarantee it. You yield your will to his will. You listen to his instructions. You follow his directions. You will never, ever lose. That's the God we serve. Yes. The renewing of the inner man must be a continual process because our spirit is constantly at war with our flesh. Amen. It is. It's constantly at war. It doesn't want to do what the Spirit of God wants you to do. So every time you turn around, you have to ask God to take off some of this uh, excess baggage I have found myself connecting myself to. Uh, this is a new year. I don't know about you, but I know my, my, my wife and I, we, we already started going through the house and looking in areas that we, don't, we ain't use that. We, that got to go. We'll go through the closets. I ain't worn that in about two years. That got to go. Get rid of stuff that doesn't belong anymore. You need space. You need to be able to have uh, a, 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 a clean house, clean life clean space so that you have the ability to do things God wants you to do without being encumbered by the things that the enemy tries to place upon you. Luke 9, 23. And he said to all, if any person wills to come after me, let him deny himself, disown himself, forget, lose sight of himself and his own interests, refuse and give up himself. Mm. Take up his cross daily and follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me. Conform wholly to my example of living. And if need be, in dying also. See, I told you, we're going to be using that word sacrifice a lot this year. That's a sacrifice. To deny yourself is a sacrifice. To disown yourself. Forget, lose sight of yourself and your own interests. Refuse and give up yourself. That's a hard thing to do for a lot of us. Because we're so used to taking care of ourselves. I know me. I know what I want. I know what I can do. I, 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 I. And I don't get you nowhere. When you start learning how to deny yourself, putting God first, following His direction, He'll be able to do it. He told you you got to take up your cross daily. Take up that symbol of sacrifice daily. Not just Sunday when you come to church, not just Tuesday when you come to Bible study, but every single day. You got to take it up. Conform wholly to his example in living, and if need be, also in dying. Get rid of that old selfish man. Become a new creation in Christ today. Be a new creature in God. 
Let God show you what he has in store for you. And watch your life change for the better. Amen? Amen. And amen and amen. I want to thank you for watching this video. I pray that you were blessed by it, that it encourages you to have a deeper relationship with God, that you continue to fight a good fight of faith and grow strong and courageous in your daily battles with the enemy. I encourage you to subscribe to this page, like us on Facebook, and log on to our website. There you can submit a prayer request, and support this ministry through a financial gift. And remember, if each one can reach one, and a reached one can reach one, then a one one will have one one, and the kingdom will have been advanced one soul at a time. Thank you again, and God bless you.